Hey YouTube, it's Ariel here, arielphoenix.com and in today's video I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial of this no-code scraping tool that I've been using. Outscraper again is a no-code tool, it's very easy to use, in fact it's the easiest no-code scraping tool that I've used yet and one of the services that I've been using it for is Google Maps data scraping. That's the first thing they list. It's very straightforward. And you might be wondering why I'm scraping Google Maps data. Last year on one of my sites, I had a quick, quick growth trajectory from doing these top 10 X in Y location posts. And when I realized those sorts of articles were working, I doubled down and I ordered a bunch more. So I spent a few thousand dollars on those articles. And then I learned that there was a better way to do it. So I was doing individual articles for top this in this location and I was covering every single city in every state. That was the plan. And then when you do the math, I don't know how many cities there are in America alone, but if I wanted to do that across the entire world, that was going to cost me a ridiculous amount of money. So when I learned about scraping and then I found this Outscraper tool, which made it so much easier for me to get that data, it changed everything for me. So I'm gonna show you how it works, but I just wanted to run through some of the services that they offer. So you've got the Google Maps Data Scraper, of course. You've got the Google Maps Review Scraper, but the Maps Data Scraper also includes reviews in it. It has, it gives you so much information once you've found the businesses or the types of businesses you're looking for. But I guess you can do reviews only if that's the only data you want. It also does Google Maps traffic directions. I'm not sure what the use case is for that. Somebody with a bigger brain than me probably has a programmatic SEO that makes the most of that API, but I don't use that at all. I use the Amazon product scraper and again, the product review scraper. If you have my bulk publishing sheet, this is really good for informing the sheet to create your prompts around. Again, um, email and contact scraper. This is awesome for outreach. If you're doing a lot of outreach, again, I've not used this. When I'm scraping the data for Google Maps, it also scrapes emails and social media pages. So it does all of that for me. And then I think they've just mentioned what the top use cases are. So these aren't necessarily services, but reputation management, of course, you can look at your, you can scan your own business and look at the reviews, what people are saying, and really look for patterns and things you can improve. And I guess come up with responses in bulk for them, which is actually something I've noticed people are using my AI sheet for generating responses to reviews, which is amazing that people are finding their own different use cases beyond blogging. You can also create a business directory with this information. As I said, you're scraping Google Maps data. You can arrange this information. If you are again using my sheet, you can take all of that information and you can get the AI tool to come up with unique company profiles. So let's just run into the tool and see how easy it is to use because it is very easy to use. Now I've had to block out some of my information on this page, but one of the things I love the most about this tool is that it isn't a monthly subscription. It's a credit-based system, which you'll find works out best because you may not be scraping consistently every month. You might want to just go in, get your data and go. And also you can see how much the data is going to cost you because it shows you before you generate, it shows you how much it's going to cost to generate 15,000 rows of data or something like that. But again, for very basic map scraping, reviews, Amazon data, this is the perfect tool. They do also give you an API token. So it is something I might consider integrating into my sheet so we can scrape data in real time and do some wonderful magical stuff with that. But I'm not 100% decided yet because as I said, while it is a very simple and cheap tool, it is quite limited. You've got Maps reviews, Amazon reviews, YouTube, like you've got some stuff and they've been adding new services as they go. Since I started, they've added some more new services, but it is still quite limited in what you can scrape. And there are other tools that allow you to scrape more data. 
But in any case, if you have a use case for the maps feature alone, this is a very good tool for the price. So just to show you how it would work, it, they've already got some examples here. So I'm just going to go with restaurant. I'm going to go with exact match because if you don't select it, it might start to group other things into the restaurant bracket. It might include, I don't know, cafes or bars, which are not necessarily restaurants, but they could fall into that restaurant category. So if you choose exact match and then you can start to select your location, I would not suggest just selecting the United States because it's going to give you so much data, so many rows of data. It's got all of the states. You can go right down in within the state level, you can go with you can go into a city level and then you can see the area code. So you can actually target specific area codes or zip codes. I'm not sure, not from the states, but you can target specific locations or specific cities. So you don't want to select all because it's going to try and scrape everything. It's going to take forever to give you your data and it's going to cost you an insane amount. So what we're going to do, we're not even going to just do a state. We're going to, let's go into Colorado. I think CO is Colorado. And let's just go into one I can pronounce, Aspen. Let's go delve right into Aspen and look at restaurants in Aspen specifically. And then what you want to do is it already selects drop duplicates. Everything that will cost you extra, you want to make sure you minimize that. So if you know you only need the top 10 results, I'd still suggest doing 20. So if there are any, it's going to tell you which ones are two stars or three stars. You want to get the five stars or the four stars so you can truly say these are the top in the location. It will also tell you how many reviews have gone into this rating. So it's going to give you a lot of data, but you want to make sure you've got a big enough sample size. And again, 20 is not even going to make a dent in your credits. So here you can fine tune it a bit. This is just email addresses. You can do email address validator to double check that the emails are correct. And phone enricher, same thing. You're finding the phone numbers of the companies and then you're checking if they are correct numbers. So we don't necessarily need any of that, but as I said, it does grab this information anyway. So places per one query, I think I've got them a bit mixed up. So total results is going to be how many they show you of the whole picture. So if you've selected 10 different cities, the total results would be if you only wanted 100 results. So that would be 100 restaurants. So you might want to put that to unlimited and then fine tune the amount per query. So if you had 10 cities selected and you wanted to scrape 20 restaurants per city, then you would select places per one query search. You'd set that to 20. And that way you've got your unlimited set. So it's not going to run into any issues. But if you did want to make sure you completely narrowed that down, you just put it as 200. But we've only got the one, we've only got the one place. So we can set the total to 20 or nothing places per one query. Again, there's only one query. So it's going to be 20. That was probably confusing because I had to go over it in my mind and correct myself to, to get that information right. But it, they have tool tips that break it down a lot better than I do. They've got tooltips everywhere and they have tutorials. So let's just move on. This was supposed to be a quick tutorial. So columns to return, this is where you really fine tune. You can select what you know you don't want or you can just leave it and it will give you everything. I'm probably gonna leave it, but I'm just gonna show you all the data that it gives you. It gives you everything. A lot of businesses don't have about, there's not, you're not going to get a huge about section or a huge description because a lot of businesses, there's their websites are really basic and standard. They don't, they've not done all of that meta stuff. But in any case, you do, you probably want to select everything, especially if you're using it to inform your AI prompt, because the more data you have, the more of an accurate business profile you can get it to create. So we'll leave it as it is. And then you've got task tags, which is just naming so you know what the task is. It's quite straightforward. But if you've got loads of these running, you want to be able to differentiate between all of them. You don't want to have to go into the file to find out what the data is. So that's it. And it tells you again, it tells you how long it's going to take. It's probably not going to take three to six minutes for this one query. But it says you're processing for the following one query, restaurant, Aspen, Co. US. 
So it reiterates what you're set, what you're going to be scraping. And it tells you how many results you're going to get back. And it does usually tell you how much the task is going to cost. I'm not sure if it's not telling me because it's just the one query. I don't think it's on the house, but I don't know if it's anticipated somebody scraping such a small amount of data. Let's see. It goes straight over to the task page. And it shows you the progress. It's pretty much done, I think. I'm just going to refresh. Yep, it's done. And in these brackets, it tells you how many you've got in the results. So what we knew there were more than 20 restaurants in Aspen. So it's given me all the 20 that I've selected. So as I said, it's such a simple process. The only thing I don't like is the fact that you have to download a CSV or an XLS, X, S, L, X file. Because I prefer Google Sheets, I've just imported the file into Google Sheets and we can look at it now. And here it is. You've got the query that you've searched. You've got the name of the business. Let's make that shorter again. You've got the website. You also have the type of restaurant it is. I've never scraped restaurants, so I didn't know that they broke it down by the type as well, which is quite useful, especially if you're doing a specific theme. So top seafood restaurants in Aspen. You can really go deep with the long tails with this sort of stuff. Subtypes. I think those are just the same. Yeah, it looks like they're exactly the same. Italian restaurant, Italian restaurant. Yeah, they're the same. Category, again, is just more classifications. But these help if you're sorting on your site, it's already done for you. You've got the phone number, the full address, and then it's broken it down into street, city, postcode, state, country, latitude and longitude, which is useful if you have a directory website, you can just import that data. Time zone. If you've got the ratings, which again, very important, you can sort by ratings. So what I would do is freeze that row and then I would sort Z to A. And then you've got the top 10 right there. You've got the top 10 restaurants in Aspen, Colorado by rating. And it tells you how many reviews these restaurants have received. So if your top 10 stops there's quite a few 4.4s, so you then would want to swap out some of these for the higher ones. So this one would definitely be at the top of the 4.4s. And then this one, it's got 500. And then you work your way down from there. If that matters to you, if that matters to you, you also have the link to the reviews. So you can add that into your whatever text or whatever content you're writing. You can say, check out their reviews or their Google reviews. Again, I used to use concatenate to do this. I would say they have received this rating from this number of reviews. And you can go and read those reviews for yourself at this link or click here or something like that. This data is extremely valuable if you are doing programmatic SEO, but you cannot code. I can sit here forever going through all of this stuff and this, the stuff that the table shows you, but you can see you can just see the data. You can see the price range with dollars. So most expensive and the you've got an unlimited amount of data and use cases for this data. All it requires is for you to be creative. So that is my not so quick rundown of Outscraper. I go into a lot more depth about data scraping and how you can use it in my masterclass, my bulk publishing masterclass. I've got a video that I'm adding to the group of how exactly how I'm using this and how they can use it in their bulk publishing efforts. So if you want to get on that course, I highly recommend it. Been getting really good feedback. Just head over to arielphoenix.com forward slash bulk publishing. Regarding Outscraper, the links are in the description. I'll put the AppSumo link, but I'll also put their direct link just in case it comes off of the AppSumo store. So that's it, guys. I hope this video was useful. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.